Hello fellow windsurfers! This video is meant to explain forces acting on the windsurfing sail. It will help beginners to avoid typical mistakes in a stronger wind, learn faster and enjoy windsurfing sooner. The sail works very similar to an aircraft wing. The only difference is in the airplane the wing is horizontal pushing the aircraft up while the windsurfing sail sits vertical, pushing the board forward. The airflow going around the sail creates two main forces. The first force acts at the right angle to the wing. It is called lift, the same force that keeps airplane in the air. Lift drives our board forward, and we like this force. The second force pulls the sail in the same direction as the wind. It is called drag. Drag generally pushes the windsurf sideways. Strictly speaking, both sail forces aren't really centered at the mast foot, but for the purpose of this video, it's not really relevant. If you close the sail, increasing the attack angle, both lift and drag will increase, and vice versa, both forces drop when you open the sail. Both forces depend on the sail shape, which can be adjusted by the outhaul. Outhaul can change power equivalent to more than one square meter of the sail size. Indeed, by loosening the outhaul line, you increase the sail profile height and add sail power. In the opposite, as you add outhaul tension, the power drops. Just make sure you don't over tighten the outhaul. At some point, the sail will lose its airfoil shape and will become very unstable. Notice that both lift and drag change almost at sync to a substantial degree in a relatively small range of attack angles. The theory says this working range is only around 18 degrees. I'll repeat, only 18 degrees. A relatively minor turn of the sail would increase its power to the maximum. Therefore, you should close the sail gently, especially in a strong wind. Adding lift and drag, we can find the resulting force. In the 18 degree green zone, the resulting force doesn't change direction. It drives the board mainly forward. However, if you close the sail too much, the drag will continue to grow, while our favorite force, the lift, actually drops. The resulting force now changes direction, pushing the board sideways instead of driving it forward. The sail stalls. Stall is a really dreadful word for any pilot, because it's a point when the airplane stops flying and drops down. So. Keep the sail in the green zone and avoid crossing it into the stall zone. This is the most common beginner mistake. Sail close too much, feet sideways, fighting the wind instead of going forward. The right position is to keep the sail in the green zone. Front foot facing forward, body turned forward. Windsurfer should always be looking in the direction of travel, also facing forward. Another good reason to maintain the sail in the green zone is your balance. Balancing against the sail is much easier if the force maintains its direction. If you close too much, you're suddenly fighting to recover the balance because the sail pulled you sideways. Unfortunately, there is no simple recipe how to avoid crossing into the stall zone. Eventually, you will learn by the feel. One smart guy suggested slightly pumping the sail in the search of the maximum forward thrust. Contrary to the common confusion, pumping is not pulling, pushing the entire sail. Pumping means the close, open, close, open motion. A beginner windsurfer would say, but those professional windsurfers in my video are going all the time with their sail fully closed almost in line with the board. How come they don't stall or lose balance? Well, 
is because they are going fast. And in addition to the true wind, they are also experiencing the induced wind. You experience induced wind every time you ride a bike on a, in a calm day. Induced wind is the airflow which hits you simply because you are moving. Trust me, those pro windsurfers still have their sail in the green zone, all because of the combination of the true and induced wind. You will see it yourself in the next slide. When the windsurfer accelerates across the wind, true wind and induced wind combine. The resulting airflow, called apparent wind, comes from a different direction as seen by a windsurfer moving at a speed. This phenomenon, in turn, shifts the green zone. Even in a mild wind of, let's say, 10 knots, you can easily move across the wind, making 10 knots. As a result, you will be experiencing the apparent wind of approximately 14 knots coming at a 45 degree angle to the board. The apparent wind at a high speed is much stronger than the actual wind. At high windsurf speed, sail force is almost triple because they are proportional to the square of the airflow speed. As you can see, at a high speed, the windsurfer has to counterbalance a large sideways component. He would do that by moving back over the side of the board and getting into the foot straps. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. You can visit my website and let me know what you think.